Welcome back. Today I'm continuing the process to convert my 1981 DeLorean to an electric vehicle. This video is going to cover removing the gas engine and transmission from the DeLorean to make room for the electric drivetrain from a Chevy Bolt. To catch you up quickly, we're taking the entire drivetrain out of the Bolt. The electric motor, inverter, charger, batteries, everything, and swapping it into the DeLorean. If you'd like to know more about why I'm doing the conversion or why I selected the Chevy Bolt, go back and check out episode one. This is Project Lightning. You know, before we officially get started with the conversion, let's do one last drive. I really love the emotional feeling of driving this car. I can't help but grin ear to ear every time I drive it. And a lot of that is from other people. You know, anywhere I go, grocery store, just out to get gas, anything like that, I just get, you know, tons of people run up to me and say, oh, is that a DeLorean? I love that car, that car is so cool. It's just so iconic, you know? But yeah, this is a pretty bittersweet drive because this is the last time that this car is ever going to be driven with the internal combustion engine. The electric motor that's going to go into this and batteries is just going to fit it so much better, I think. You know, when this is finished, it's going to be one of about 20 or so electric DeLoreans in the world. And I hope it's gonna be one of the cooler ones. It's gonna have DC fast charging, 200 miles of range, zero to 60 time of around six seconds. And I hope it'll be one of the most documented electric DeLorean versions in the world. So now we're back in the shop and as I turn the car off for the very last time, that's it. It will never be running under gasoline power ever again. But as one story ends, another begins. All right, safety first. Let's go ahead and disconnect the battery and then up she goes on the lift, so we can begin. I am going to get the coolant draining from a few different spots. First up front at the radiator, and then coolant pipes under the car. And uh, I just let these sit and drain for a while after I was done doing this. Oh, here it comes. There's always another extra little squirt of fluid too, after a while, and I don't know what that's from. Then at the back of the engine, I'll pull the main cooling lines. And then the coolant bleed pipe that comes in from the water pump. Then up front at the heater core lines. Now back to the transmission. I'm going to drain all of the ATF out at the uh, regular drain plug. Then disconnect the transmission cooler pipes and let those drain.
Now onto the drive shafts. There's bolts on each side of the shaft, and once I get all those out with the correct power tool, uh, then I can pull it out. Onto the rear fascia, I'm removing the screws that hold the tail lights in so I can access some additional screws that hold the fascia to the rear pontoons. I also need to remove these little side lights which are on the same wiring harness and connect through the rear fascia. The fascia then gets unbolted from those pontoons. There's four final bolts that hold the rear fascia on. Uh, these ones were pretty rusty and needed a fair amount of coaxing to come out. So I had to try a couple different tools here. Before we can remove the fascia, I know that I need to disconnect the wiring harness that goes to it, so I went ahead and disconnected all of the harnesses while I'm in there. Uh, there's also like the main ba battery positive cable that connects there as well. And then this is the ignition coil, so I find the right wrench, <laughs> finally and take that off. And then finally is the jump start post that connects uh, straight to the battery and that comes off. And now I can remove the rear fascia. Oh, no I can't. I forgot to remove the engine cover latch cable, so I open up that little plate and disconnect it. And then I can pull the cable out and remove the fascia. On most DeLoreans, there are a few more nuts and bolts that hold the fascia on the bottom, but they are all broken on my car, so it comes right off. Then I remove some grounds, and then I'm removing the bumper um, along with the rear section that holds it. In the left pontoon, there is a gas evaporation filter, uh, and it comes out with these four bolts and some twisting action. And then I'm back to the firewall now on the driver's side, and I'm removing the automatic transmission cables and the ballast resistors, which on my car are mounted to this plate, which I believe is aftermarket. Here goes the throttle cable, getting it removed from the spool. It's just one nut on the bottom that holds it in. And then the air filter box is taken off with a couple of wing screws, and it pops right off. There's a remaining connector and a vacuum hose on the back of the engine that I removed here. Now, under the vehicle, looking up where the transmission linkage connects and also where the fuel accumulator is, I'm removing the linkage, which uh, you can't see here because it's too dark. And then the O2 sensor is just a quick disconnect and comes right off. Here I am disconnecting the fuel supply line that feeds into the fuel distributor. 
The engine is only held in with four nuts, so I remove those. And then the transmission is held in by just one nut on either side, uh, and so I remove that. And an offset wrench here is absolutely required on the back side. I'm gonna use a load balancer on the engine with a one ton engine lift to pull the engine up. And here I am quickly realizing that I can't remove the engine with the cover in place. Uh, so I decide to remove that. And now off camera, I'm also going to remove the muffler uh, since it was in the way and hitting on the frame here. And then I also realized that the louver needs to come off. So I go ahead and remove that too. And then I can put the lift back on and uh, with a little bit of uh, gentle persuasion or, you know, maybe a little bit more, less gentle persuasion. And then maybe I can tilt the engine, see if that does anything. And then I can cuss a little bit. go and then finally it does break free and comes out so there we go we've got the engine and the transmission removed in one go under this closing plate is the gas tank so I siphoned out the tank and removed all of these bolts and hit my head to remove the closing plate And these cooling pipes here are also in the way of the gas tank, so I disconnect those and drain them out with a little bit of fluid. And then by disconnecting them up front and giving them a little bit of a twist, I'm also able to get those out pretty easily. And then the gas tank just slides right out. And then I remove these final couple of cooling pipes that are under the car, since I don't think I'll need those. I've been working really hard these past couple of days to get all the gas components out of this DeLorean, but I needed a place to sit down and luckily I've got one now. Thanks a lot for sticking with me to the end of the video. If you wanna see what happens next, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. This is Project Lightning.